Tiger Cloud, this is Pisces 01, requesting landing clearance. Pisces 01, identity confirmed. You are clear to land. Welcome home. Copy that, Tiger Claw. Proceeding to Hangar Bay. Welcome, everybody. My name is Fist25, and today we're going to be embarking on a deep dive into the lore, function, aesthetic, and capabilities of the Anvil Carrick. The Anvil Pisces, which I'm flying in now, and the Ursa Rover. Before we begin, I need to land this Pisces, and I'll meet you inside the Carrick. Welcome to the Anvil Carrick, my absolutely favorite ship in Star Citizen. Before we take a tour of the ship and break the Pisces and Ursa out for test rides, let's go into the lore and history of this iconic ship. I'll meet you right here when we are done. If you want to skip ahead, there are chapter markers in the video on the timeline below. But I do ask when our adventure concludes that if you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing to our channel and share the video so that we can keep the lights on and help the channel grow. And without further ado, let's roll that intro. In 2823, 129 years ago in lore, the UEES Carrick was the first ship of her name to come off the Anvil assembly line. She is designated as R-11, with the R standing for research, and the first one being the size classification of larger than 65 meters, and the second one being that she is the first ship of her class. The Carrick was a military project at first. She is an explorer. She is a researcher. She maps jump points and, if needed, can pack a massive punch to those who seek to destroy her or her crew. There is surprisingly little lore about the Carrick. There is no brochure on the RSI website, and thus we only have limited information to go on. We do know she was first developed by the UEE military and then subsequently declassified and released to the general public to purchase. Her main role is as an exploration ship. We know this because she is very self-sufficient, employing a robust scanner and mapping-oriented sensor suite, tier two medical facilities that allow regeneration along with an onboard pharmacy, repair facilities, for its included snub ship, the C-8X Pisces, and ground explorer, the Ursa Rover. To further enhance its role as an explorer, it has reinforced fuel tanks for long-duration flight and an advanced Tarsus Tunneler Jump Drive Array that attaches to the Quantum Drive, and a dedicated computer core room that allows an enormous amount of processing power into charting jump points. 
It has a dedicated crew quarters, mess hall, recreation room, captain's quarters, navigation and jump plotting room, a hangar, a repair room, a drone room, a garage, and ample storage capacity. It even has an upper and a lower bridge to allow for separate piloting and command. This ship is about as self-sufficient as it gets. However, there are a lot of features of this ship that are not yet feature complete. The canopy, while beautiful and multi-storied, is designed to have a blast mode where the blast door comes up to protect the bridge crew. There is a drone room where drones can be employed as unmanned but piloted explorers, probes, and possibly could repair ship damage. The belly storage modules are designed to be swappable for, to further customize the ship towards a specific mission. And we all know there are no jump points in the game yet, so scanning for new jump points or entering existing ones is not possible in Alpha 317.2. One of the interesting lore, and also one of the only lore pieces I have found about the Carrick, is about the Survey Carrick 132, or S1132. The S, of course, meaning Survey, and the 132 being the 132nd ship of the Carrick class. She is popularly known as Good Queen 12. He entered service in 2831 and was assigned long-distance survey missions at the Xi'an border near the former Perry Line. In her last operation in 2836, she was designed to patrol en route to the outer reaches of the Osiris system. After her last reported communication with a buoy check-in, she missed the next two scheduled reports and disappeared without a trace. Mission organizers dispatched search and rescue spacecraft but found no trace of S-1132 in her assigned area. In 2866, 30 years after her disappearance, the fully intact Carrick was discovered on the lone inhabitable moon Kyukya 1A in the Kyukya, I hope I'm saying that right, system. All of the ship's systems were also found to be functional and her stores of food and medicine were largely intact but there was no indication of the crew's whereabouts. So, due to the lack in, of lore and information about the Carrick, I will also be reviewing the C-8, the C-8X Pisces snobs, as well as the Ursa rover that come with this mammoth ship. The Anvil Carrick is considered a large size 5 ship with a crew complement of 4 to 6. She can carry 456 SCU of cargo in the default configuration. She sells in-game at Astro Armada in Area 18 for 26.6 million Alpha UECs. And in real life, she sells for about $600 as of September 2022. She does go on sale during time-limited events like Invictus um, because she was a former military ship at IAE, and at other times like the current ship showdown, which is actually over and the Carrick actually won the ship showdown of 2952. The Carrick actually comes in two different versions. You have the regular Anvil Carrick, then you have the Anvil Carrick Expedition. While the two ships are identical in every way, the Expedition has a special livery to set it apart. It's wider and has a rose-colored glass uh, for the cockpit, well, for the, for the entire cockpit area, and also has red accents and comes stock with a Pisces C8X or an, what's called an Expedition instead of the stock Pisces, which it also turns out has its own unique livery, which is, once again, a whiter in color and has rose-colored glass and two more size 1 weapons aboard. Weapons-wise, the Carrick is formidable. It has three manned bubble turrets, two on the left and right side of the ship, that sport two size 4 BF-447 laser repeaters. 
It also has a rear turret uh, at the rear of the ship, also equipped with two size four Rhino laser repeaters. In addition, it has a remote turret on the top of the ship that can be manned from the upper bridge, equipped with the same size two, I'm sorry, same two size four Rhino laser repeaters. Despite its size and formidable guns, it is not designed to be an offensive ship. It's designed to be defensive, so it doesn't have any missiles. It does sport a reinforced hull with 93,000 hull hit points and two size 3 shields, which are industrial Barbican grade B shields. It continues the industrial component tradition with a single size 3 Reliance industrial grade B power plant. It has twin ice flush industrial grade B coolers and possibly the slowest but most fuel efficient quantum drives in the game, the industrial grade C comma. In maneuverability, it has 22 thrusters, four of them being main engines, and of those engines being nearly two of those engines being uh, twice as powerful as the others. It has two retro thrusters that are honestly are not that great. Uh, it does take a long time to slow down. And it has 16 maneuverability thrusters that are also underpowered, in my opinion, of a ship of this size. It has an SCM speed of 208 meters a second and an impressive top speed of 1,236 meters a second. It also holds 15.7 million liters of hydrogen fuel for exploring around the system. And it holds 44,000 liters of quantum fuel, enabling it to tra traverse the Stanton system at will. Although when in Pyro, the Carrot crew might have to go with a conservative quantum drive if they expect to do any real exploring. One last thing to note. Currently, the Carrick is one of the few nameable ships in game right now. It is hard to see the text, but that is being worked on by CIG. The name of my Carrick is the TCS Tiger Claw, which, yes, is a shout out to my old days of playing Wing Commander and destroying the Kilrathi Empire. With all that said, I do absolutely love the Carrick. It was my first large ship purchase, and I can't wait until we have actual exploring to do in the game. Despite not all the tech being in the game, it is still a very special ship, and I wouldn't trade her in for anything, especially not the Odyssey. So with fair warning, the only Carrick I own in the game is an Expedition, so most of the shots will be with that livery. The same holds true with the Pisces. And just to reiterate, make sure we are clear, the Anvil Carrick Standard Edition in real money or bought in game comes with a Pisces C8 not the C8X. The Pisces C8 can't be purchased on the Pledge Store. It only comes with a Carrick. The C8X is considered a starter ship and can be purchased on the Ship Store. Don't worry, it confuses me as well, but the C8X is clearly the better starter ship and the better Pisces in general because of the extra two size one guns. Now, Speaking about the Pisces, let's let's talk about the Pisces. If you thought there wasn't much lore on the Carrick, there is even less on the Pisces. It is a scout and reconnaissance away vehicle for the Carrick, and it was developed by Anvil at the same time as the Carrick. It features a pilot seat and two additional jump seats for extra passengers. It also sports four SCU of cargo for hauling away cargo or just dropping it off. It wasn't designed to be a jump ship, but its quantum drive can be equipped with a jump drive attachment. It is designed to be with a Carrick in its hangar bay. It comes in two versions, the aforementioned C8X Pisces and the C8X Expedition. The C8 and C8X come with two gimbaled size one CF1117 Bulldog laser repeaters, and the C8X has two size one non-gimbaled OmniSky 3 laser cannons as well. The Pisces comes with two missile racks, carrying one marksman size one infrared missile each for a total of two missiles. 
They come stock with the Shimmer Stealth Grade C shields at size and quantity of one. One Regulus Military Grade C power plant and twin size one military grade C bracer coolers. It also has a size one civilian grade C expedition quantum drive. Out of the 16 thrusters, two are for the main engine, which is actually very quick to accelerate and its SCM speed of 142 meters a second and top speed of 1,150 meters a second, which is technically slower than the Carrick is still very good. Twin retro thrusters, which are underpowered, and 12 maneuvering thrusters, which are actually quite powerful for a ship of its size. That gives the Pisces above average maneuverability. The Pisces has a paltry 3,250 hull hit points and an above average size one fuel tank of 522,500 liters of hydrogen fuel and 645 liters of quantum fuel. The Pisces Expedition can also be bought at Astro Armada in Area 18 for 406,000 Alpha UEC, or in real life as a standalone ship for $45. It is also considered a starter ship with that package going for $60. So, there, there is one other vehicle that does come with a Carrick, and that is the fabled RSI Ursa Rover. The real name is just the RSI Ursa. It is an all-terrain rover, that also comes stock with the constellation Aquila. It is of course used primarily for ground-based exploration. It is derived from a military vehicle and has enough survivability and firepower to survive low intensity combat. Its remote turret offers a 360 degree field of fire and it can be operated by the pilot or co-pilot. It can carry up to four SCU of cargo and has a crew of two. The cargo area can hold up to four additional personnel instead of cargo. It is unique because it is a six-wheel vehicle. It uses rugged Hastelin tires, a proprietary engine and power plant system from RSI. The Ursa is based on a rapid deployment vehicle developed for the UEE Marines, and Ursa is also Latin for bear. The Ursa, of course, comes in a limited livery as well, which is known as the Ursa Rover Fortuna. It is the same vehicle, just a different green-themed Fortuna livery, which was recently available at the 2952 Stella Fortuna event just a few months ago, which is the only time it is on sale. The Ursa has a size 2 remote ball turret that employs two size 1 CF-1117 Bulldog laser repeaters, a civilian grade C thigh 0 PIN or PIN shield, a size zero civilian grade C radix power plant and a civilian grade C size zero cooler. This gives the Ursa 22,000 hit points, which is quite sturdy for a ground vehicle. You can pur purchase the Ursa standalone at Lorville for 70,267 Alpha UEC or anytime in the ship store for $50. This vehicle does come stock with the purchase of a Carrick in-game or out of game as well. Okay, well, that was a lot of information to go over. Now it's time to take a tour of the Anvil Carrick Expedition. And in the course of that, we will take out the Pisces C8X and the Ursa Rover as well. After that, we will go over the loadout of each vehicle and do some chase camera combat footage before retiring to our final thoughts on each vehicle. Ladies and gentlemen, Please put your tray tables in the upright and locked position. And in the words of Captain Pike, hit it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back from the lore section of the Anvil Carrick, the Anvil Pisces, and the uh, RSI Ursa Rover. I hope you enjoyed uh, some of the history of those different types of ships. And now we're going to take a look at the Carrick itself and do an internal tour. Um, it's it's a big ship, so it might take a little bit of time to go through it. There are four different decks, uh, three main decks, and we're going to start right here on the technical deck. So here on the technical deck, we can see that we just came through in our Anvil Pisces and we landed. It does look like the hangar bay doors are open, but I can assure you they are closed. Um, we're going to go ahead and open them right now. 
that you can see that indeed they are closed and they are now opening into the bright daylight of Daymar. Up above the hangar bay there is the top remote turret for the Anvil Carrick. It is the only remote turret for the Anvil Carrick and we're going to show you what that looks like and then how to do all that in just a few minutes. Um, but right now we're kind of at midships here in the in the Carrick. We're on deck three, which happens to be the technical deck. Here is the hangar bay up here. Engineering is aft and there's the command bridge up front. Um, in this midship area here, there is a service ladder door. This ladder does go all the way to the bottom of the ship and um, I believe it stops here. It does. So that is how we uh, can traverse from the sub deck up to this deck. The ladder door does not work on the habitation deck, so you can't get off there. Looking at some of the aesthetics of this ex-military ship, here's our warning clacks and lights and some of the uh, design choices here for putting uh, the, the HVAC system uh, so we can see it. We always have this crazy spark going off here. Uh, but let's move forward here a little bit and we will go ahead and enter the drone room. Um, this room is completely pointless right now because drones are not a thing in the game, but they will be one day. There's two operating chairs. This is one of the operating drone chairs and the other one is over here. The drones one day will sit inside of these bays right here and they will be able to be piloted by uh, the people in these drone seats. This one we can actually get into, uh, but there's no point because none of this stuff actually works. Um, but it will be cool one day to use drones to repair the ship or send them out as probes or something like that. We're going to head forward to uh, uh, the port side where this is the actual repair room in the ship. Um, Again, another room that doesn't actually do anything right now. There, this is a some kind of a repair system. You can put parts in there, maybe repair it. Put things on this workbench. Use some of these tools, the drills, and the socket set out here. Um, but other than that, there really is not a whole lot we can do here on the uh, repair side of things. As we keep moving forward, you notice that it says bridge. Um, there are a bunch of escape pods, none of them that we can get into, but this is, you're going to notice there's a ton of escape pods in the Carrick itself, because people could be all over the ship. Coming into the upper bridge, notice we have a lift that goes from the upper bridge down to the lower bridge. Uh, we'll be using that later on, I think. Um, as we come forward, we will see that there is uh, two, two support seats over here and then the command station in front of us along with the actual navigation portion of the command deck here. Um, one day we'll be able to hop in here and, and plot navigation and different things like that uh, on the character. But right now, this station doesn't actually do anything. To our left here is a support seat. I'm not going to enter it because there's nothing it can do. It can't move around shields or anything like that. But the idea here is that the person in the support seat could take orders from the commander and do different things with the ship, like move power and shields around. Over here is the gunner seat. This is a seat we are going to hop into. This uh, gunner seat here does control the remote turret that is on top of the ship. I already have it on, but the power is actually up here. Power on, power off. It's to the top left of the main screen. To the top right is enter remote turret. So we can see our turret here with our two size four Rhino laser repeaters with the hangar below us. And we can go ahead and fire them and shoot, you know, shoot them off. And we do have pretty good visibility here for the top of the ship. Uh, we can go almost 90 degrees up and get any targets on the top of the ship all from the safety of inside the ship as well, because we're not exposed to any type of turret. Okay, and then there is the actual command uh, station right here. We're gonna go ahead and enter this. We can actually control the ship from here. We can fly the ship. We don't have authority to do quantum travel, open and close doors, unlock things, uh, turn the ship power, any of that, but we do have the ability to hit I, turn our engines on. If you can hear that bass, <clears throat> that is the engines of the Carrick turning on. Um, tons of glass around here uh, in the command station. 
not a whole lot of downward visibility, but still a ton of glass. Hopefully one day they'll get the blast doors set up so we can actually use, or if we're taking fire, it won't blow the glass out of here. We'll go ahead and shut our engines off. Exit the command station because we don't want to go flying just yet, but you can see again, tons of glass, lots of visibility in the anvil Carrick. Now we're going to head, head aft here on the technical deck. There's lots more to see on this deck. It's very busy deck. Lots of stuff going on. We're going to go to the port side here. We're going to head aft. There is our hangar bay with our Pisces in there. As we keep heading aft, um, you notice on the back side of the hangar bay, there is a big elevator here. This elevator goes to every deck on the ship, and it is the only way to reach the very top deck, which is the cartography deck. Now, coming in from either side of the port or the starboard side to the aft of the ship will lead you on either side to the turret. So this particular turret is the port turret. We're going to go ahead and head out towards the port turret and enter it. Now, this turret will actually extend itself uh, from the ship. Uh, that is all happening right now, and it becomes like this kind of little ball turret. And we can see it's already spinning around, and uh, once again, oh, looks like, oh, there we go. Now we have ammo. So, pretty good visibility uh, left and right if you have people manned in both turrets. Um, good up and down visibility, but... Uh, limited because it can't shoot on the interior of the ship which is actually probably a good thing a view from outside you can see that port turret moving around the starboard turret is exactly the same way and we'll go ahead and retract the turret inside the ship and there we go as we spin around here we're going to head back inside the main area of our technical deck there we go Wait for our door to open. Okay. So, if we head further aft, we're actually going to see an engineering space. And uh, But in between that, if we make an immediate midships turn, we can see this is the eng chief engineer station here, basically. You can't do anything with this control unit, but you kind of kind of could oversee people working on the engines and in the engineering spaces from this point of the ship. Heading over to the starboard side, you can see that it's exactly the same as the port. It's a symmetrical ship. And over here is actually the starboard turret, uh, which we're not going to show because it's the exact same thing as the port turret. Coming back here into engineering, though, we can see there is a lift here that takes us down to lower engineering. But from the upper engineering, we can see our engines right here and all the really cool volumetric smoke effects. And uh, as we head aft, we can see that I've already opened up the quantum jump drive. This is our WeTech TS2. This is an upgraded jump drive from the standard, uh, really slow comma drive that comes default with the Carrick. Um, different control panels and, and ways we can repair the engine one day when that gameplay is in the game. There is a ladder that'll take us down to lower engineering. We're gonna head down there right now. From lower engineering, this is where your ship's systems are at. Here, down here is the power plant. This is a, I believe, a Reliant Power, Reliance power plant by Juno Starwork. And as we head around the sides, we can see there's different things like shield generator panels. And here, here's shield generator two. Shield generator one was in there. But then we have like life support and there's actually nothing in there. Same with radar. There's nothing in there because those systems don't exist yet. We'll go ahead and call the lift. If we head a little bit forward in lower engineering, um, we'll see we have fuel tank access. So ahead of us is fuel tank B apparently. Um, engineer access only. And we can't actually go inside there or anything, and I'm sure this is some kind of a machine to help uh, push out the fuel. And then on the port side, it's the exact same thing. Fuel tank A. So maybe one day we'll have to do repairs in there. We're going to go ahead and take the lift to upper engineering. And there we go. So that is the engineering section in a nutshell. Let's uh, head back forward. We're going to head towards our service elevator. And we're going to take that all the way down to the sub deck. So we'll go ahead and call our little service elevator here. 
There we go. This is uh, one with a little bar to protect us, and we're going to take ourselves to the sub deck. We're going to do the habitation deck last because it's the, uh, the other most used deck in the ship. All right. So first thing out of the, out of the, the sub deck here from the service elevator, we'll notice there is a docking hauler. If I go in there, there is a, uh, well, I'm going to go ahead and go in there. There's uh, some escape hatches in here, and further ahead, there actually is a docking collar for the Carrick. There's oxygen holes in here, so if I go forward in here, I'll start to suffocate because I don't have a helmet on right now. Leaving the docking area and making an immediate right from the elevator is the garage. And right here, you can see that we have the Ursa Rover parked in here for a uh, later on part of the video. Uh, not a whole lot to the garage. It really is made to house this vehicle. Um, from this panel, we can actually open our door uh, down here. I'll go ahead and open it, make sure I don't suffocate. And this is our ramp. This is actually how you get on the Carrick from the ground in something like a hangar as well. So the ramp extends down, and then there is another uh, ramp that's extending down from it as well. There you go. You can see it now, and that's how we get on and off with uh, the person, our person, and our vehicles. We're gonna go ahead and leave that open. We'll close that up uh, when we hit the uh, pilot seat. But there's also this button here. This raises and lowers this ramp right here. So I like to leave it up when I have a vehicle parked in here, so I know I have access uh, cleared into the different cargo bays. The last door inside the garage is actually our, our service ladder door, and the, here is our service ladder. We can go all the way up to the technical deck on, but we can't stop at the habitation area. All right, now let's check out the cargo bays in here. There are three cargo bays on the Anvil Carrick, and they are very spacious. We're up here on the catwalk in cargo bay one. We're actually going to take a lift down into the cargo pod. And you can see there is quite a bit of room uh, on the Carrick to uh, put cargo in. Um, there is no outside access right now, uh, so everything's done internally. Um, we're going to take the elevator up to the catwalk. But hopefully in the future we'll be able to swap these modules out for something else as well. Don't close on me door. Here is cargo bay door number two. Or cargo bay number two. And then... Uh, we have a third cargo bay. So the, the, the carrier can fit an enormous amount of cargo in here, and that's a really good thing. Okay, there we go. Last door. So now, keep in mind, here's the elevator. So we're pretty far aft uh, on the ship. Um, on the sides here, on this subdeck area, there is a weapons locker. So we can store weapons in there for uh, use one day, and it's actually on both sides. And then, once again, more escape pods. Six escape pods, because this is a crew of six. If we come around either side, back aft, you can see it's the same on both sides. Uh, here is our aft turret. This is a manned turret. We're going to go ahead and enter it. We're going to spin around and go down a little bit. But here's the actual aft turret. And there we go. So we're facing aft of the ship right now. So this is like if you're coming in for a ground target and you're trying to clear out some turrets or something like that, this is the turret that you want because this will shoot the ground. Other than that's pretty much standard turret. Turret to size four Rhino 447 laser repeaters, which is the same for all the turrets on the ship. Okay, exiting the turret right there. And boom. We'll go ahead and... Uh, I'm on the port side of the ship. I think the port side of the ship. And we're going to take the... <laughs> I got confused there. We're going to call the elevator. And we're going to take it all the way up to the cartography deck. Which, once again, you can only access from the main elevator. Notice the doors right here that we're leading up. The cartography deck door is actually behind you. And as we come in, deck four, you can see here is the cartography area. There is a cartography station right here, but it doesn't do anything right now. Um, you can see there's some kind of a solar system plotted around here, and it's it's a cool looking room. But there is no gameplay for this. We can't plot jumps or search for jump holes or anything like that from the cartography room. Oh, Squirrel Lord's trying to... I'm making a video, Squirrel Lord. Sorry, buddy. Um, 
from these other doors here, we uh, can see there's uh, once again another escape pod. Uh, you'll get, we're kind of at the top of the ship here, so we got a really nice view of Daymar out here. More escape pods over here, so three on each side. That gives us another six. There's a door for an airlock here, and uh, now we're looking at the forward part of the ship because there's our hangar bay down below us. And what we can do from here is we can actually go through this door and EBA out onto the sides of the of the very top of the ship. And if the hangar bay door was closed, we could walk around uh, on top of the hangar bay. So maybe if we need to do a repair or some hole scraping or whatever to the ship, we can actually get access to the top of the ship from this room up here on the cartography deck through either EBA door. All right. And that, like I said, that that's short and sweet stuff of the uh the cartography deck there's not a whole lot to it and we're gonna go to the last deck here you're gonna go to the habitation deck where the rest of the uh cool stuff of the carrick is at that was the technical deck here is the habitation deck the elevator is the very aft portion of the habitation deck everything else is forward of it the reason there's nothing to the left or the right is because of engineering from the technical deck this big room uh, to my right, as I'm heading on the port side with the frosted glass, is actually the uh, medical area of the ship. And here is the medical bay. We'll go ahead and enter the medical bay. It's a tier two medical bay with three different beds. There's bed number one, bed number two, and inside this main area is the main medical bed. From this bay, we can actually do the digital medical assistant here, and we can set our spawn point to the Anvil Carrick if we wanted to. We're not going to do that right now. I believe I'm set up at Lorville. You can see I'm a little bit low on food and water, so I'm going to go ahead and lay down on the bed, on the bed, and it should recharge a little bit of that. It'll heal all but the most egregious of injuries uh, that you would receive. Um. The only thing that's a better bed than this would be something at a at a station somewhere. Pretty good medical care and regeneration available on the Anvil Carrick. One of the few ships that actually offer that. The only other ship that offers that is the 890 Jump. Currently, these other beds also uh, do similar things. I don't. I'm not sure if you can heal on them. I believe you can lay down on them though. Um, also inside the medical bay over here is the storage room. This is kind of the, the full pharmacy going on in here. We're growing stuff. We got supplies and pills and gloves and lots of liquid O2 and things like that. Some, some medical records. And we have a full-fledged doctor's office over here with a observation station, a microscope, a sink, a couple of computers, uh, more O2, and some kind of an engineering access. All right, so leaving the medical area, we're going to be heading forward. You'll notice to my right is that service elevator right here that we can actually take if we wanted to. Um, this notice this door. This is the ladder access, and it does not open. No. All right, coming up here, um, just past the midships to the left of us is the crew mess hall. Inside the mess hall is a nice little table. The crew can sit here and eat at, you know, uh, plates and stuff like that are up here and silverware. A uh, nice little viewport here of the setting sun on Daymar, as well as a microwave and whatever other stuff they would need. On the opposite side of that is actually the crew habitation area for everyone except the captain. Here they have kind of a rec room here with space billiards and things like that. And here is uh, the toilet section of the Carrick. Not very fancy. Couple sinks, a uh, couple actual toilets in there, um, toilet paper, things like that. Going in this other room here in the, from the billiards room is actually the habitation sleeping area. There's one, two, three, four, five bunks available um, with the captain being the sixth in his own dorm. So in here is going to be your inventory for the ship and kind of the locker room for the crew. And then over here is the other hygiene area, the shower station for the Carrick. The two full showers for the crew of five, which is pretty good if you ask me. I had it much worse when I was in the actual uh, Navy. So. 
All right, leaving the crew habitation and rec room area, we're going to he keep heading forward here, and we're going to make a left on the port side to the captain's dorm. So the captain of the ship actually gets his own dorm room with his own office here. In his office, you can see there's a little station, a nice little chair, some decoration, things like that. A uh, chessboard and some other stuff to look at. Into this room is the captain's bed uh, with his very own teddy bear, as well as the captain's uh, inventory and place to hang his jackets. And then there's the captain's bed with a uh, full toilet and shower, a sink. And the captain has it pretty good here on the Carrick. Lots of space for them. And last stop heading forward, bright white area. This is the actual main bridge. And again, what we score and call the elevator to show you, it does work. It takes you to the upper bridge if you need it. We're down to the lower bridge. This is an open space for a radar area. I opened it before. Again, nothing in there. The other part of this lower bridge is actually this, the server core access. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight main uh, server computer core areas in here. There are two co-pilot seats, one right here and a one right here. But we're going to go ahead and enter the main pilot seat right here. The pilot is the only one that can enter quantum uh, on the ship and it, the only one that can turn power off on the ship using the inner thought up here. Um, power is to the very top left of the left MFD with engine on, engine off as well. On the right is open and close the exterior and press to unlock. Let's go ahead and close the exterior. We'll see that our hangar bay door and our front door are indeed closing. So pretty easy to get to. There's only so many buttons on the character hangers closed. We can see the very front part of our ship with the Ursa Rover in there is also now lifting up and starting to close. I'll go ahead and turn the lights on. Whoa, that was very bright. Those are the lights on the Carrick. Not super bright, but good enough to light up a very dark Daymar. All right, so reset our view here. Go back into the pilot area here. We do have four MFD or five MFDs. One, two, three, four, five. Um, and we do have a radar here on the bottom. The actual pilot has pretty good view space towards the bottom of the ship as they sit pretty much over that for that top landing gear and good view space around the top as well. Uh, we have an enunciator panel here and our standard HUD. So that is actually pretty much it for the Anvil Carrick interior tour, guys. Um, I hope you had a good time looking at it. I hope it was quick enough for you. There's a ton of stuff to show. We are going to take the, the Carrick out flying around Damar in the daytime so you can see some uh, see what it looks like to fly a brick around atmosphere, even in a low atmosphere moon. Uh, it was pretty interesting. Uh, Jawa and I had a good time putting the Carrick through its paces, and we didn't actually blow up, so that's a good thing. So thanks for uh, watching this part of the video, and we'll see you in the next section. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are locked into the Carrick in the pilot seat. Let's take this baby out flight around Damar and see how she performs. First off, engine start. All right, engines are started up. Let's go ahead and lift off. Here we go. Nice lift off there. Go ahead and rotate those landing gear up. Little sandstorm here on Damar. You can see that the when the gear grow up, the the turret spindle deal kind of goes back. And lets us know we're in flight mode. All right, let's take off. I'm going to put it into SCM mode right now. Cruising around, I don't know, 180, something like that. Almost 200. And we're just going to cruise around Daymar a little bit and uh, see how she handles. Here we go. So I don't like to take ships too fast, fast uh, 
SCM speed, and, and soon enough, and when the new flight model comes in, we're not going to be able to do that anyway. I'm going to go ahead and take it off of cruise control, just so I can manage my thrusters. Effectively, we'll kind of come into some of these canyons here, and we'll oh, make sure we don't hit nothing. This thing does turn like a beast of a ship, which it is. Kind of coming around this hill here, this... Whatever you want to call it, throw in a little boost. There we go. She can be a monster to control sometimes. I like the look of this little canyon ahead of me. Let's go ahead and see what it's made of. Don't want to take it too fast. The Carrick is not made for fast maneuvers. A lot of collision alert warnings. I think we already kissed the ground once. All right, she made that one. Let's turn her in. I got pretty close. Here we go, let's make a wide turn. Then we'll boost it around. See what she can give us. Trying to get some more altitude here. He can be a bear to turn. Just clearing this ridge. Funny, I see all the mineables when I'm not looking for mineables. Isn't that the case? We're just going to clear this ridge right here, and there we go. We're going to actually come up, and we're going to do kind of a split S maneuver. Yeah, we definitely did kiss the ground. A little bit of the Carrick is damaged. But that's okay. So we're going to come in. Come up there. It, it, it can still perform these maneuvers in atmosphere. It's not too much of a, a hog molly. Looks like there's some damage behind me. Actually, it's all red and sparking. I like it. Okay, and here we go. We're coming up on this, this other ridge. We're just going to kind of go past it. Go ahead and bump our top speed up. We'll try to do what <laughs> what we can do for low flying in the Carrick. Around Damar here. Just see how fast we can go. I actually have on subscriber armor that I don't want to lose, so let's be careful. And it, I mean closer to the ground it feels like you're moving just so fast but really we're we're doing 100 over scm we're doing about 300 right now it just feels so much faster because the ground you know everything on the ground is moving faster gain a little bit of altitude bleed off a little speed i wish the uh altimeter actually worked in this patch i'm not sure why it was broken from the previous patches Switch to exterior mode. And you can see here in atmosphere, I'm trying to turn. I have full thrusters on turn. I'll even give it a little boost. Giving it a little boost makes it, it really does help it. But making a 180 degree turn can be tedious. I'm going to have to use boost to keep from. I'm actually going to maximize the boost. To keep from falling out of the sky. There we go. But she, she can move a little bit. All right, back to first person. What do you guys think? I mean, have you flown the Carrick? What do you think about how she flies? She, she is made to be an explorer ship. Uh, she's definitely not nearly as nimble as something like the Hammerhead. Hammerhead would have made this turn much, much easier. But I am curious to what you guys think. Back to an external view. And we're just continuing this left hand turn. We're going to try to even out and come across this ridge. Use our boost to help us go straight. There we go. Shall we attempt a barrel roll, folks? Well, not a real barrel roll, but an aileron roll anyway. This is our roll speed in atmosphere. 
Not great. Still trying to move forward. All right, we're finally upside down. And coming over quicker on the downside here. Very nice. I like that crater right there. I kind of want to fly through it. All right, so there's our roll. What'd you guys think? I think it was very interesting. All right, back into first person mode. Looks like we do have a bad guy floating around somewhere, or at least a guy who's red. Don't know if he's bad. I'm gonna kick our max throttle back to max SCM there. Then we're just gonna pass this ridge. Oof. I feel like this this thing it's a, it's kind of like controlling a brick in atmosphere if that makes sense a lot of collision alert warnings I definitely think this this thing I mean it, it's an explorer it's just made to be nice and smooth give it one more turn around some of these mountains here if we can line up straight and here we go Coming around the side of this mountain here. Let's try it again here. Coming around these uh, these mountains, you gotta adjust urban 3D space here. Woohoo! Nice right turn there. A little boost around it. There we go. Get us get us clear a little bit. Well, I'm going to try to find our station here. There we are. Hopefully we can do some repairs. Actually, let's head up into space and we'll, we'll actually head to Port Olisar. Try to do our repairs there. Because these, uh, these outposts have been notorious for not working for repairs. That'll give us a little chance to get out of atmosphere here as well. So I'm going to boost the throttle. You need to be about 3,000 meters, 3 kilometers up to leave atmosphere. We're still climbing. There we go. Let's go ahead and quantum to OM1. Now that we are in space, we're going to head to Port Olisar if we can. If we can find Crusader, that is. All right, there's Port Olisar. Let's see if we can actually get there in one jump. And here we go. In quantum travel. And of course, we're not actually at Port Olisar. It is, uh, we basically just went to Crusader instead of PO. It's still a little ways out. I don't love how that's a thing, but uh, it seems to be it is what it is. It is easy to overcorrect here when you're flying, so 
Keep that in mind. Ooh, we definitely have some bogeys at PO. What's going on in this server? I do not know. But we're going to try to come in for a landing. We're drop our gear. Actually get a call for a landing. Turn on our VTOL thrusters. And we get the big pad here. Let's try to do this externally here. All right, we stopped drifting so much. Momentum is a thing, guys. We're moving a big hunk of mass in space. All right, coming in for a landing at PL. <laughs> Pardon me. We always go farther than what we think, I think. Just because of this angle. And nice and gentle. Right there on PO. And there we go. We're here at PO. Time to repair, refuel, rearm. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next part of the video. All right, folks. So here we are at the Pisces section of the video. And the Pisces is none other than the ship standing before me. Let's go take a look at it. This actually is the uh, Pisces Expedition model. Um, we are here at Daymar, just post Sandstorm here. Um, you can see right away, there's some imposing guns right up front. Um, this is the stock loadout for the Pisces, and, and we'll get into that in the loadout section. But here you can see it is kind of a very chill little snub fighter. Uh, there is clearly the, the cockpit up front, way up front. We got our retro thrusters, couple guns. We have all of our maneuvering thrusters around the sides. Since this is an expedition version, you can see that down here on the starboard wing and the port wing is exactly the same. There are uh, there's another set of guns here and also a set of size one missiles. So one on each side because I am in a landing configuration with the gear down. The wings there do fold up because this ship is the snub ship for the Anvil Carrick. Some really interesting uh, green tent here on the back. Uh, that's not what's intended. I think it's just an issue with there's actually green lighting in there because the ship is turned off. Um, which I did that on purpose because when the ship's turned on, the lighting changes. Um, you see our engines in the back, just two little two little engines. And then right around the port side, we have our other guns and our missile. That's really about it for the Pisces. Um, it's it's actually one of the cool coolest ships in the game. I think it's I love this little ship. It is literally my ferry. It is what I shoot most of the videos in when I'm in a different ship. Um, it's quick. It's reliable. It's maneuverable. It uh, it's just not too in intrusive or obstructive. Uh, it's just a great little ship. So let's let's go ahead and go in the, uh, from the back here. The back is the only way to get in it. We'll go ahead and open the door. As you can see, the colors here really are kind of a steel or steel gray. Um, because we're at Daymar, we still have this band of whatever it is here. That's, that's something with Daymar, something like the planets, whether it's yellow or white or whatever. As we close up the Pisces, um, we can see that the lights indeed are green here uh, from the inside. Um, let me go ahead and come over here. I'm going to hop in the seat real quick and turn the lights on. So notice everything is green. And we're just going to turn. We're going to turn everything on real quick. There we go. OK, so significant change in lighting, right? Um, it does even go red sometimes because these are kind of these weird yellow red lights. But uh, from the back here, you can see this is the cargo area of the Pisces. It does hold four SCU of cargo. 
Um, we will definitely, uh, you probably saw that in the beginning video, the lore video. There are two jump seats as well in the Pisces, so you can ferry passengers as well as cargo. So this is uh, the perfect away ship. Um, it can carry at least three crew members and a little bit of cargo to take you where you need to go. It's got a ramp for easy in and out. It's just, uh, it's a cool ship. As far as interactability, I don't really think it's been flushed out that much. I don't see anything here. Um, can't access anything. In the round the Pisces for components. Um, we could get in the jump seat if we wanted to. Um, there's nothing with the scanner, the shield generator. There's no other buttons or interactability we can give us. So we'll go ahead and hop into this jump seat. And what helps this is uh, as you're flying around, you're not going to really see, you know, you're not going to be thrown around the Pisces very much. Uh, so, and that's a good thing. So really not much to it. Let's go ahead and hop into the pilot seat. We'll do a quick uh, cockpit tour and then we'll go flying around atmosphere and space. Check out the Pisces. Might even do, it is a dogfighter too, so it might even do a dogfighting mission. So uh, looking around the cockpit from the left, there's one, two, three, four, five, six multifunction displays. That's a lot for a little ship. Uh, the main default loadout looks like we have a targeting comms, uh, our systems, our shields and ship status target again and then actual shield so actually good default screens here i'm not sure why it says my shields are down because they're definitely not down um anyway <laughs> let's look at buttons here there's the power on and off button our warning panel uh, pretty much a 3d radar up here it is an anvil manufactured ship i'm looking for the there's an the engine on and off really looking for there it is open exterior press to unlock so that's how we can open the back ramp uh, our exit all the way on one end uh, standard HUD let's take a look at the glass decent uh, view from the glass here there's no down view or anything like that um, there's no buttons on the sticks or anything below and I do not feel an ejection I don't remember if this ship has an ejection or not I don't feel it does Let's take a view from the outside of the Pisces. Um, landed here at area 141. We can see it's, it's just this tight little compact snub ship. It's perfectly and it was made for and designed to fit into the Pisces. Um, really good viewpoint here from the cockpit. Just small, fun, but it's like a little bite-sized carrot, right? Not really. I do, it does have that classic anvil uh, circular whatever that thing is on the top um, but it's very anvil shaped it's got the anvil logo on the port wing and there we go let's uh go ahead and reset the view here and take off just a little bit you see it's got four actual landing gear that we will cycle up boom and then the wings come down Looks pretty good. Looks good from there. Let's go ahead and uh, we'll back off a little bit and we will go ahead and uh, fly around the atmosphere a little bit. What do you guys say? All right, so here we go. Oh, let me make sure it's at SCM. But this is SCM as the ship is just flying around uh, 141 here. Some, some good sized mountains around here. Um, you can see as we come with this roll, the ship feels really good. Here's a first person view. Come around the back side of this mountain. Walk back over to third person. So right now I am flying with mouse and keyboard and not my sticks, um, which was what I do most of my flying in. We'll head back towards 141 and let's give it some gas, guys all the way up woohoo you can see the ship does does haul and uh it is pretty darn maneuverable we'll give it a little bit of boost that's a 180 here and it did not take that long to get it there full turnaround coming around this mountain 
So, uh, of course, just like, it's not a fighter craft, but just like anything else, uh, it, it does have a little bit of reluctance to turn. Um, but it actually feels to me really good in atmosphere. It feels like it's it really is the perfect complement to um, an exploring ship like a Carrick. Whew, came close there. Go back into the cockpit, see what that looks like. And we can see we're I mean we're coming around different kind of kind of mountains here. There's a little bit of that dust storm coming in. Gotta make sure to keep my altitude up. You can see how far my deflection is on my on the ship. So, I mean, it's moving really well. And if it moves this good in atmosphere, imagine how good it's going to actually move in space. But let's let's test our speeds here. In atmosphere. Looks like SEM is 140. We'll see if we can get our maximum to without boost. Trying not to hit any mountains. I mean, we're we're clearly going to go past 500. And this set, this ship actually has really good sound when you're passing people as well. Um, so here at Daymar, we're. I mean, it's going slow, but I definitely think it's it can surpass. Uh, right now, we're holding steady right around 550, 548, something like that. I definitely think it can surpass 600, maybe even 700 with boost. But let's head up into space and see what this thing feels like in space. I wish uh, CIG would fix the altitude, the altimeter there. I. It really irritates me that it doesn't track. All right, let's do a uh, stock quantum jump here. All right, so there we are in space. We're going to let the ship go all the way to its maximum speed. Pulling a lot of G's here, 9.5. Now we're down to zero. The 1,149, I think we have, there we go. 1150 is maximum speed, which is pretty darn good. Pretty darn good for, for the ship. We'll go ahead and uh, see what the ship looks like in space. And see, uh, I'll show you the retro thrusters here. There we go. We can see the, the side thrusters are doing some stuff. Okay. Sometimes the ships just don't want to cooperate, right? <laughs> All right. So we're headed at an SCM speed. There we go. There's our... You saw that you saw the... Uh, here's the little afterburner right there. And as far as retro thrustering... See it on the kind of on the bottom there. They're like a bottom vent. Those are our retro thrusters. They're not. They're not those uh, vents on the front. Although I think that's what they were probably supposed to be. So let's. Uh, ooh, what a what a pretty picture of Crusader and Daymar right there. What do you guys think of that? All right, let's go uh, find a mission or something like that, and uh, we'll get back to it. Stay tuned. All right, guys, so we are coming up on our target here. Um, I just took a quick dogfighting mission. I'm trying not to hit any asteroids here. Oh, it's super bright. Lots of sun. And here we go. Um, we're looking just to take this guy out. We do. I didn't change out any of the stock weapons, so we do have uh, two uh, of the Bulldog laser repeaters and two of the Omni Sky 3s, uh, which are laser cannons. Um, we are going to bump up our. There we go. We're going to. We're going to bump up our weapons just a little bit so we have a little more in reserve. And we'll give uh, the ship just a little more gas. Okay. The Pisces is kind of a, 
I think it's a unique ship. It, it, it's it's small, it's compact, part of the Carrick. It's good for away missions. It can do dogfighting. It can carry a little bit of cargo. It can carry your friends. There's a lot it can do. So just keep that in mind. Oh, we got some uh, we got some for some hostiles here. Um, we do have gimbal weapons as well. Gonna release our countermeasures. We're going up against a Gladius on a training mission, which is actually pretty interesting. I'm gonna turn off our, our gimbals here. Eh, turn them back on. Why not? Gladius is significantly faster than the Pisces as far as maneuverability goes, but it dies just like everybody else. I tell you, with these four weapons on here, we're going to try for... Oh. Something's up with the game. It doesn't want to give me missiles. So we'll just stick with the guns, even though there, there were two missiles on there. Here is an Eclipse. It actually has... Eclipses are weird right now because they have infinite amount of ammo. So, come on. Come on, fella. Kind of a weird scenario. Okay. It's ballistics, even though they're small. We're doing quite a bit of damage. The Pisces does not have great stock shields. So we are shields critical. We're going to go back to normal. Charge our shield. Hopefully not die. We're a little bit more maneuverable. Whoa, shields came up real fast. All right. Let's go after this guy again. Oh, he's upset. He's definitely not in torpedo range, I can tell you that. Weapons are recharging pretty quick here on the Pisces. Why do these guys take so long to kill? And their movements here kind of befuddles me. Just jousting after joust. Alright, his shields are definitely down. And, you know, I am play fighting here with the mouse and keyboard, so... Oh! That was weird. So he jumped, and now he's gone. So we lost that guy. Not sure what happened. Not sure if he blew up on an asteroid, or if he jumped. I don't know. That was really weird. But uh, sometimes uh, Star Citizen can be a bit weird. So... With that, what do you uh, think of the Pisces dogfight there? Not too bad. Uh, a lot of the times when I'm filming, if Java runs into something, uh, I have to mop up the rest of everybody with the Pisces. Uh, so it is capable. And that's really about it, guys. I think it's time we, uh, I guess, jump to the next section of the video, and we'll see you there. Well, hey, folks, as many of you know, this video has taken forever to get out. And while I've been filming it for a while, um, IAE has come and went and we have a brand new ship. And uh, that is the C8R Pisces Rescue. So in an attempt to make this video more complete, um, I'm going to show off the Anvil C8R Rescue. And we're going to talk about that flight around just a little bit. Uh, but first things first, I want to get into the Moby Glass real quick and show you. Okay, so the Anvil C8R Pisces Rescue. Brand new ship revealed to IAE this year. It is a variant of the Pisces, and it is a medical Pisces. It has the lowest tiered medical bed uh, that you can get. Uh, very similar to a, a Drake Cutlass Red, but with obvious less space. Uh, it's a little bit different of a Pisces. Uh, as you can see right here, and this has the default uh, CAR rescue paint, which is a red and a white. 
Um, the ship has two guns, kind of hard to see, uh, but only has two guns, kind of like the regular uh, C8 Pisces. Uh, when we go through the systems, we can see that it has, it comes with a bracer, cooler, size one, grade three, uh, military, grade C. Uh, power plant is a Regulus, which is a military grade C. See the theme here? Quantum drive is an expedition, uh, which is a civilian grade C. Uh, so not the fastest. And for some reason, it comes with a Gemmer uh, uh, shield generator, which actually is a stealth grade C. So it's very kind of an odd combination there. Um, I like the military coolers and power plant, but I don't even mind the expedition uh, quantum drive. But the, the Shimmer shield generator is something I think you're going to want to upgrade probably pretty quickly. If you plan to have any real survivability in this ship, I would go with an FR-86. I'm sorry, FR-66, because <laughs> it's a size one shield. Um, or the civilian equivalent, which I believe is the 7CA or something like that. Um, looking at weapons, uh, it does carry two missiles. They're both size one. The default is the Marksman uh, infrared size ones. It also has, it comes with uh, two CF-117 Bulldog laser repeaters that are set on, set on gimbals. The are size one mounts. Nice that they gave us gimbals to go with it. It takes nothing away from the size of the gun because the mount is a size one. So actually a decent weapon loadout stock. I wouldn't even bother changing it because uh, you're not really going to get into a lot of fights in this. Um, it does have some some cool paints. Not only can you put the regular Pisces paint on there like the Scrubland camo and the Nightbreak. You can put what's called the heartbeat livery on here, which is kind of a kind of a weird hazard looking livery paint job, yellow and red. It's 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 interesting. I don't like it as much as stock. Um, the one I do like is the C8 Pisces responder livery, uh, which is very nice, actually. And uh, there's another one that comes with concierge. I'm not sure why I don't have it. I need to pick it up. It is it called the Code Blue livery. Um, see if I can put a picture of it up in the video. And it is uh, it has it's basically the Blue Cross, Blue Cross Blue Shield of Star Citizen. Um, but I like the regular red, white and black livery with this. And so there we go. That is the Pisces uh, rescue. Let's uh, now let's go take a look at the ship itself. All right, ladies and gents, so there she is. This is the Pisces C.A.R., the rescue version here. As you can see up front, I mean, it looks just like any other Pisces from the outside, um, except for the it only has two guns, just like the C.A.R., and they are on gimbals, size ones. Got a cool little paint job here. Um, you can see the missiles under the port side right here next to the thrusters. There is a big change here we're going to get to in a minute, um, but I do want to show you the back side of the Pisces here. And the starboard side, it's a symmetrical ship, so it's the same as the front side. Now, here is the, the big difference. Um, notice the door. You don't just click to get in anymore. There actually is a panel here on the side. Now, this panel has been retrofitted into the C8 and the C8 uh expedition the c8x and currently in 317.4 it is broken for most people i guess some people have it working but like on my c8x i can't use it i can't get into it um because this door is here and i guess cig forgot to connect the button to actually open the door or something like that but it is broken but to open the door on the c8r which this was built for you just uh, highlight it and click it the door opens. Now, I already did a first look video on this, but I just wanted to make sure that's part of this is the uh, deep dive on the Pisces and the Kirk. There isn't much lore for this rescue version. I'm sure that's coming at some point. But there is a nice little plus sign there on the bottom. And then as we walk in, um, we can see there is um, what appears to be a future component access, a jump drive, coolers. Um, nothing I can see is interactable with this. Um, more coolers, power plant, things like that. To close the rear hatch, you just go to this closed door right there, the, the panel, and it will close up the rear hatch. There is a set of medical doors that were here just a second ago. We're going to use this panel to close them. But just like in the Carrick, it's that frosted glass type of look. 
We're going to go ahead and open them. They do open automatically as you kind of come in. As you look to the right, you can see the med bed of the C8R. Um, it is a, a, I think they call it a tier. I think tier three is the worst bed. So it is a tier three, but it'll heal, you know, a lot of injuries and get you up and won't fix any tier two or tier one injuries. Over here, we got some O2 canister, some some good uh, flavor graphics, basically. Um, not sure what's charging over there. Trash can. One of the really neat things besides having this the sink and the syringes and all that, all the kind of crew cool stuff. Um, there is a crew storage up here, which is inventory for you and the ship. And up here is patient storage, which again is inventory for you and the ship. But down here is a sliding glass uh, storage cabinet. And in here is water and some power bars and some uh, med pins and things like that. Things you can actually use, um, <laughs> like the power bar I just grabbed, which I can't eat. So I'm going to go ahead and drop that. Um, I meant to actually close this and open the other side because on the other side is all uh, there's still some water and there's more med pins, basically, um, the other type of uh, adrenals and all the other type of med pins. So fully stocked with usables. Um, up here to the left is a single jump seat. Uh, this is basically your doctor, your physician who is attending here. And to the right uh, is the digital medical system where they can administer treatments. Other than that, guys, it's it's a it's pretty much like any other stock Pisces. There's no other interactables in here. This never really got the gold standard pass. Let's give the uh, the old Pisces a quick uh, check here in the, the cockpit department. We'll just check it out real quick. I'm going to rely on my review that I've already done on this. If you want more information uh, or you can watch the Pisces or the expedition video. Um, the idea of this Pisces is that it flies faster in a straight line, but it's less maneuverable. I haven't seen that data bear out on its thrusters. They, they are exactly the same for me. Uh, but we have six MFDs. They all actually work. Um, as far as a copy view, there's the engines over there. I'm not sure if there's any other. It looked like there was a button there. Open exterior, press to unlock is on the right. Our engine, there's power in the center. And that that may be it, folks. <laughs> not not a lot going on on this guy. Um, engine on, engine off. Press unlock. So really just those interactables. I will go ahead and call for a takeoff. Go external view here. Go ahead and lift up. I'll zoom around so you can see the, the four landing gear, just like any other Pisces. They go up and into the ship and the wings come down. And we'll slowly make our way up. We'll rotate as we have a nice little sunset going on here in Lorville. It actually is, I mean, uh, just like any other Pisces, it's quick. It's 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 fairly maneuverable here in atmosphere. We see that beautiful sunset going on um, as we're climbing out. We can't see a lot of detail because we don't have a lot of sun on the ship. But let's fix that. Let's go ahead and climb out. We'll see how long it takes. That was really actually quick for the ship to change direction. We'll bump up the throttles, give it some boost. See how long it takes us to get to about 12,000 meters. The boost is taking its time, which is good. That's a lot of boost for a little ship. I could easily see that being nerfed in the future. And we're, hey, we're we're in quantum range now for a lot of different stuff. Let's uh, let's go ahead and make our destination Everest Harbor. Okay, kind of a slow quantum drive, but that's all right. Now I'm going to go back to SCM speed as we go past Everest Harbor. If we can't get into the sun there. There we go. Nice little sun shot on the Pisces. Go ahead and spin the camera around a little bit. 
You can see it looks pretty good. Um, fire the weapons. A couple of size ones. Take out pretty small targets. I guess you, know, you could do a box delivery missions in this. You could do very light combat missions in this as well. Um, but mostly it is a purpose built craft for uh, medical treatment. And there we go. I, I'm not sure what else there is to say about the medical Pisces. It's a cool variant. I'm glad it's here. Um, you know, it makes sense. I wish they would upgrade the Cuddy Reds med, med bed to a tier two and make this our tier one option because it is kind of a starter ship. I believe it's also under a starter package and uh, it's a neat ship. Um, and there we go. So that adds in the addendum um, to this Carrick video. Uh, there'll probably be a couple other addendums due to the Carrick winning besting show and you know, the new paint it gets and things like that. But the Pisces C.A.R. Rescue and hopefully the doors are fixed for the other Pisces in patch 318. See you in the next section. All right, everybody. So we're back here and this time it's to look at the RSI Ursa Rover. One of the really neat off-road vehicles uh, in Star Citizen. Um, I believe it does come default with the Carrick as the exploration ground vehicle. And you're going to see why as we kind of get into it a little bit. I pulled it out here at Daymar and we're going to we're going to go around and kind of take a look at it. First thing you can see in, from the outside, there's a ton of glass, right? Uh, you can see clearly into the cockpit with both both the driver and the co-pilot, right? And you can see the area in the back. Uh, barely, very clearly, it says Ursa all over it. And, uh, you know, Ursa is Latin for bear. Also, on the bottom here, it looks like there's some kind of a winch or a tow cable or something like that. that maybe we'll be able to use that one day. That would be super cool. Plus a big bumper pad um, made to hit obstacles, I guess. The Ursa Rover is a six-wheel vehicle, three on each side, one in the front, two in the back. Um, there are a couple entrances here. One is is here on the port side of the vehicle. And you can also enter and exit from the rear of the vehicle. Um, other than that, standard vehicle stuff, brake lights and, and things like that. And then there are two guns on the very top of the Ursa Rover that are maybe important to have in some situations um and they also stow right here um, when you stow the guns which sometimes you have to to make clearance for things it also looks like there's uh like little uh eyelets up on the top so that you could possibly hoist the ursa rover at some point so let's go ahead and get in it and we'll see what it looks like we're gonna come around the back here first you can see it opens up with kind of a ramp here and we'll go ahead and close that up. That's one of my favorite parts about it. Um, you can see that it holds six people in total. There are uh, four kind of away seats, which looks like one day they'll they'll kind of fold pull back. I believe there that does take SCU as well. Uh, you can put some cargo into the Ursa Rover, which is I don't know. Do you do you think that's important? I'm I'm interested to know. Um, from the front here, you can you can see the the doors are actually open right here. That wasn't my intent to to have them open. Um, just a kind of an interesting little ship. Yeah, it does have two SCU of cargo. I'm not sure if those go there or kind of in between or what. But that is kind of the cargo grid area. Um, as far as interactables, there's really nothing there. Nothing but the door. Um, I like the padded kind of nature of everything. Very military. Oh, there are those doors closed. You just saw them close and then open. Not sure what module one, two, three, and four is. There is a locker, which opens up so you could probably put some, some kind of gear in there. And I'm not sure if these are weapons racks, Com component hardware access, it says. But we can't get to anything there. Same thing over here. 
this door right here, or this <laughs> object right here is the gun, uh, the door. Oh my gosh, I can't speak today. It is the door leading to the outside. Pretty cool look there. Um, as we come back inside the ship, you'll notice that these guys open up. The ship, I keep calling the ship. I mean to call it the vehicle. There is a passenger seat, which we will go ahead and enter now. And there we go. We have our passenger set up here, kind of a keyboard type thing. We're going to power it on. We have a couple multifunction displays. Well, really just one. I'm not sure what this side does. There's an exit. Then there's a remote turret. So the passenger can get in the remote turret. They can fire it like you could any remote turret. We're in Arvista Zone, but just to let you know, with your second person in there, you can get in there. We're going to exit the passenger side. There is a bug when you get out of the driver's seat. You end up on the top of the rover right now th through the sunroof or something like that. But uh, we'll see if that happens as we're going. And now into the driver's seat. So the cockpit here, you can see we have one, two, three multifunction displays. Uh, we can also enter the remote turret from the pilot's seat. Um, what else is on here? There's open exterior, press to unlock right there. I'm looking for our power buttons, which we may or may not have in here. Oh, that's, oh, that's remote turret. I thought I saw a power button. There's power, power off. And looks like that engine on engine off. That's really about it, guys. It's pretty, pretty standard here. Good amount of glass. Um... You can see the road down in front of you. You have a couple uh, sunroofs here. And uh, let's take a look from, from the outside. Those are two Bulldog Size 1 laser repeaters. It does look pretty rugged. Um, I like it a lot. And I think we should, we should uh, go for a, a little drive. What do you guys think? Let's go ahead and do that now. All right, so we're here in first person. It is actually not a super fast vehicle, but it is very rugged. So here we go. We're, we're crawling around the we're going to crawl around the mountains of Daymar here. Here we go up this mountain. And a little bit of air there. Whoa! <laughs> oh. We flipped around a little bit there. And there we go. We'll come back down. Whoa, a little more air there. I'm liking it. <laughs> oh, jeez, that was pretty crazy. Okay, uh, let's, let's adjust the camera there a little bit. Okay, I actually like to drive in third person. So let's go ahead and crawl up one of these rocks here. It, it is going pretty darn quick. Oh, and it already flipped. But right back on its its normal side there. Look at the air. Look at the air that it's getting. Holy jeez. And boom. Oh, oh, there it goes on its back. Will it recover? Yes, it will. I do like this. Yeah, she has added in that they're able to recover. Um, and flip around and stuff like that. I wish I wish vehicles had navigation systems, though. You know, it's very hard to uh, navigate <laughs> and go from one place to another if you don't really know where you're going. It seems like it's a little bit front heavy. Um, cause we do tend to roll over on the front quite a bit, but yeah, just like that jump right there, but it is going really, really well. Let's, uh, whoa. So that was air and then an immediate stop. Let's get out of armistice and we'll go shoot this. Uh, we'll shoot this gun. Okay. We're, we're still pretty close to the station, but pretty far away. Okay, back in up. Whoa, jeez. Oh, looks there's use use exit here. 
What does use do? Nothing. Nothing. Very interesting. Um, as far as the remote turret goes, let's go ahead and enter that. And here we go. We can shoot the the bulldog laser repeater. Was the ship taking damage here? Can I shoot my own ship? Nope. Okay. So there's that. Also, uh, if you just want a straight on shot as a pilot, um, or as the whatever the driver, you can move your reticle around and, and the gun will follow you. So you can kind of be driving and, and shoot over there and move move over there. It is pretty interesting the way the way it works. Um so I mean I, I'm not sure what else to do. We're we'll probably as part of the video roll up and in and, and the combat section and, and show off the Ursa shooting things <laughs> like coming up to a station with a with a full crew you know uh six people and and go take over a bunker mission or something like that and show the versatility um from this view though you cannot fire the gun just to show just i'm trying right now you know what? i'm probably an armistice that's why but you probably can fire the gun there but anyway um you spawn these at locations like these pads where you can normally spawn stuff and uh, guys, I think that's probably it uh, for the Ursa Rover. What what did you think of it? I I like it. I think it's a really cool vehicle. Um, there's not much we can do with it right now other than transport um, because we don't really have a navigation system and things like that. So, you know, let me know what you think. And uh, with that, we'll end this part of the video. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you in the next section. So here we are at the loadout section. I'm going to try to keep this as short as possible. I know this is an already incredibly long video, but there is a lot of content to cover. The Kirk is a massive ship as, as well as all the Pisces variants and the Ursa Rover on top of that. So I hope you are getting your knowledge worth, your money's worth out of this video. It has taken an incredibly long time to make, but it is a labor, labor of love. Anyway, on the screen, you can see the Anvil Kirk. This is the base model of the Kirk. Um, I did want to show you up on this side here where it has all the Carrick stuff, um, the cargo capacity, the uh, the total hit points, all that kind of stuff, the, the quantum fuel capacity that between it and the Carrick Expedition, um, it is the exact same. So um, if we go to the, the Carrick Ex Expedition, which you can't buy in game, all the stats on the Carrick itself are the same um the, the actual ship stats itself I, I believe everything else is the same i think it is legitimately just a paint job um it, yeah all the components are the same as well so we're just going to go over the regular carrick but know that this is also the carrick expedition um which you're basically paying 40 bucks for a paint job which is something i did uh because i like the colors better so uh, the role of the ship is an uh, expedition exploration ship. Um, it is a size five ship, pretty large. Uh, it is made to have a crew size of at least six. You run it effectively. Um, you really can't solo in the ship because you can't. I believe you can do missiles, but you can't fire guns or anything like that. So um, it is a ship that you could solo haul cargo with. Um, there is a ton of cargo capacity in the ship. Uh, which is nice to have, uh, you know, 456 SCUs of cargo. Um, it's right up there with the Caterpillar, basically. Um, doesn't match a C2, though, um, which is probably a better ship to solo cargo. Um, but you can keep a vehicle in the garage and a Pisces in the hangar bay at the same time, which you really can't do in a C2 um, if you max out its cargo. That being said, the total hit points for the ship are 93,000 hit points. That is a lot. That really is a lot. Let's give a comparison to the Drake Caterpillar. Um, the Caterpillar itself has 45,000 points versus uh, the Carrick, which is at 90, um, I believe it's 93,000. Uh, we can compare it to an 890 jump as well. 890 jump has 153,000 significantly more armor than a Carrick. Um, 
anyway that being said it does have two size three uh industrial gray b shields the barbicans it does go 208 meters a second as scm speed and 1236 afterburner speed which is quite fast uh as we saw in the video when i was doing the low flying with the carrick which was insane it was trucking that for a ship that big that is really moving um it doesn't have the agility of something like a hammerhead but uh it, it still gets up there and goes like pretty much every anvil ship out there um pitch yaw roll 28 24 75 degree roll that's really good for a ship of its size uh so i do think it being of a military background uh probably bumped those stats up huge amount of hydrogen fuel capacity which is needed because it burns a lot of gas flying around in the atmosphere um quantum fuel 44,000. it can go anywhere in stanton uh on a single jump with the stock quantum drive which we'll get to in just a sec the weapons that it comes with stock is what i would man it with um in the current meta of 3.17 3.18 Comes with uh, four, uh, 447 Rhino size fours on both of the uh, the turrets that are on the side of the ship, the rear turret that is manned, and the remote turret which is on top. That's that's the only weapon I would put up there um, because of how unbalanced weapons are right now. Back in the day, I used to run a half laser, half ballistic, but that is not something you could do now because the guns are limited still. For a year and a half now limited by the gun and not by the size of the ship but things we can slash should change oh by the way uh i mistakenly said just a second ago that you can fire missiles there there are no missiles on the character there are guns um there are two industrial grade b barbican shields that supply 110,000 hit points each the f if you're gonna take this thing into a fight don't i i don't suggest putting industrial grade b's on there However, there are some, some interesting stats that I just learned. Um, when you look at an industrial shield, uh, physical absorption uh, is, says 5095. Now, that is what I take to be how much ballistic it can take, right? Let's, let's pull up a military drive like the FR-86. The FR-86, or military shield, sorry. Um, it also has that same stat of 5095. Um, so I was told the industrials actually handle ballistics better than other. Maybe it's against civilian. Let's, let's pull up a civilian Nargun. Nope, all the stats look like they're the same. So never mind. I'm dumb. Um, I can tell you the FR-86, as far as distortion damage goes, uh, it takes a lot more to shut those shields down than the civilian drives, uh, civilian shields. We can see the civilian uh, distortion shutdown time, 2269 um, versus 4539 for the military and the industrial drive, like uh, the shield, the biggest shield for industrial, the parapet, which is what I used to run back in the day. Um, even less 1444 so my suggestion if you can afford it is to just upgrade to military fr86s for both all of the day as far as the power plant goes even with upgrading those shields there's there's no reason to upgrade this power plant it is an industrial grade b um the best option would obviously be to go to a military type of power plant but I'm not sure we're seeing any huge gains on that uh, other than distortion shutdown damage. Looks like is better. So, well, maybe it's worse. 7350 on the Reliance. And yeah, 5950 on the military. So the opposite on power plants. Uh, the industrial power plant can take more distortion damage than the... Um, in the military so leave that power plant in place that's fine leave it alone as far as the coolers go uh comes with a couple ice flushes at sixteen thousand eight hundred cooling uh a second 
if you look at the chart over here, it's not even touching. It has a capacity of 33,000. We're using 1,500. There's no reason to mess with them and leave them alone. The one thing I would recommend changing is the quantum drive. The comma, the industrial grade C, and a stock with both the Carrick and the Carrick Expedition um, to go from Microtech to Arcorp, which is one of the longest distances in the game, takes 17 minutes. That's a really long time. So my suggestion is to go ahead and grab the TS2. Uh, as we can see with all the military drives, the lowest drive, the Pontes, goes for 117k. The Baladin, which is the second fastest drive, goes for 142. The TS2, 93,000. It's the cheapest and fastest drive, and you're going to be fine on Quantum. Now your time for Microtech to Arcorp is five and a half minutes versus 17. That's a huge change. If you're going to change anything on this thing, for the love of God, change the Quantum Drive. It is just imperative that you change the Quantum Drive. Um, we already went over paints on the other sections, but there is a lot of different paints on here. The 2950 Vesting Show, Copernicus, Expedition, Stormbringer, Polar, Red Alert, which is the 2952 Vesting Show livery. The, and then it has the Kepler and the de Blasio. Um, I don't remember those other liveries. I'm going to have to look those up. As far as thrusters go, um, all together, 3.66 Gs going forward. Thrust capacity, 157.8 I don't know if this that mega newtons something like that it's a lot this this thing has some decently powerful thrusters to get you going uh the retro thrusters are also pretty powerful they're half a basically half a g uh each the main thrusters being 1.14 so something to think about with the anvil carrick um yeah double was actually just trying to call me. So now we're going to move on to the Anvil Pisces. All right, so now let's talk about the Anvil Pisces. Um, as we look over here in Anvil, we can see that there are three different variants, the C8, the C8 Rescue, and the C8 Expedition. Let's first just talk about the regular Pisces. Um, but we'll compare the, the base stats here against each other. Uh, cargo 4 SCU, it's a size 1 ship. It says crew size of three. Yes, you can fit three people. There are three seats in there, one pilot and two jump seats. It is kind of an away ship, if you will, a Pathfinder exploration type ship to aid the Carrick. Um, it has a total of 3,250 uh, hit points, armor hit points. Um, it is 142 meters a second. Uh, SCM speed, afterburner, a total, you know, top speed, 1150. Slower than the Carrick, believe it or not. Uh, it's actually a really maneuverable ship. Uh, picks you all roll 42 degrees, 44 degrees, and 145 of the roll. It is quite maneuverable, even in atmosphere. It does have a low quantum fuel capacity, uh, 522,000 liters of hydrogen and 645 liters of quantum fuel. It... Uh, Depending on the drive, it can get you around the verse. But if you go with the fact, just like just like most size one ships, except for the Drake Cutter and the Benny, uh Defender, it can't take a real fast drive without you having to refuel somewhere. So noting these stats here, let's let's pull up the other ones. Um, the same hit points are on the rescue. Uh, the same maneuvering, the same quantum, and the expedition. Those all look the same as well. Yeah, so they all look the same. The base stats for all three ships are really the same as far as like hit points and things go. The <laughs> the weapons. Okay, so if, if you don't know about the size one weapons. Um, Traditionally, when you have a size one hard point, uh, you can you can put a size one weapon on it. If you if you do want to gimbal something and uh, on a size one, you could put a size one gimbal on it. It'll fit a size one weapon. Typically, when you gimbal, the sizes go down. So that means if you have a size two hard point and uh, well, if you put a size two gimbal on it, you can put size one weapons on it on that gimbals. 
On a size three hard point, you put a size three gimbal, you have to have size two weapons. On a size one, you can actually have size one weapons. So this thing comes with 117 Bulldog laser repeaters. Those are the perfect weapons for this type of ship. Um, I recommend you keep them on there and keep it gimbaled. It does come with two uh, stock Marksman 1 infrared missiles, which are pretty good missiles. I would probably go for something like a Pioneer um, or uh, the Spark 1, because I like cross-section. But there's no reason to do that at all. Um, whatever f suits you for the missiles. The shields, different story now. <laughs> the shields that it comes with are Stealth Grade C. Now, maybe that's going to reduce the signature being a stealth component, although nothing else here is stealth. Uh, they are very fast to charge up. I will give them that. However, uh, 1,500 hit points, I, I don't think is enough. I would recommend upgrading it to military shields uh, with the FR-66. Uh, they can take a lot of distortion, shutdown damage, and things like that. Um, more than the industrial shields. Uh, so I would upgrade to an FR-66. As far as the power plant goes, we're still, we're at a quarter of what what we actually have uh, to use, 4,000. Um, we're, we're just at 1,000, so I recommend leaving the power plant alone. It already is a military uh, grade C, so it can just stay there. Same with the coolers. We're barely using the coolers. Uh, military grade C bracers, I'd keep them there. The quantum drive. Uh, if you want to keep it here, that's fine. It'll take you just about eight and a half minutes to get from Microtech to Art Corp uh, using the Expedition Civilian Grade C. If you were going to upgrade it, though, I would recommend going with the Civilian Atlas um, or going. Or the Expedition is just slower than the Atlas. If you want a faster spool up time, go with the Atlas. Uh, or go with the Voyage, which is just a little bit faster. You're going to save about 30 seconds going from Microtech to Arc Corp. But the stop drive that's on it, the Expedition, is just fine. Um, as far as paints go, you have the blue and gold livery from Invictus, Nightbreak, and Scrubland are new. And then uh, the Pisces was part of the Red Alert livery with 2952 and getting the red paint. The thruster situation <laughs> 5.1 g's forward now these should change between the ships um you're looking at getting 2.44 mega newtons going forward the retro thrusters kind of small compared to the main thrusters which makes sense smaller ship 2.5 g's per main thruster retro thrusters at a quarter g so it is fairly slow to slow down but the maneuvering thrusters are these 0 0.81 0 0.82 g's they're, they're pretty they're pretty beefy. Now, keep that in mind. 5.16, 2.44. Let's switch over to the Expedition. It's the exact same as far as thrust. And let's go ahead and go over to the Rescue. What do you know? It's the exact same. PIG did say it's going to have faster front speed, you know, going fast. 2.58 Gs versus a regular Pisces, which is 2.58 Gs. So as far as Urkel is concerned with game stats, these ships are the exact same. Um, they're just differently configured. The Expedition. What What is so special about the Expedition besides that it costs more? Well, it's got two extra guns. It still has a crew of three, all the same stats as far as armor and all that. But it comes with the regular two guns that the Pisces has, and it comes with two more. They are size one Omni Sky 3s, which I would immediately get rid of. I would throw a gimbal on both of those, and uh, I would just throw right back on a CF-1117 Bulldog or an Attrition or something like that. You could go with a Ballistic if you want a, something that's not going to last very long, but... I would immediately replace. Now you got four of those guns. So something to think about. I would change out the shields. So they come with the shimmers, just like the other ones. I throw on an FR-66. I keep the power plant, keep the coolers. And right now, yeah, just keep the uh, quantum drive. And there you go. So double the firepower of the regular Pisces. Now going over to the Pisces rescue. Ship stats are the same. Thrusters are the same. The guns are the same as the regular Pisces, except this thing has a med bed. 
It does say crew size of three, which technically can fit three people. Patient, uh, a physician, and the pilot. Um, comes with two missiles again. Comes with the shimmer shields, which I would again upgrade to the FR-66. Don't mess with the power plant or the coolers when it comes to the next expedition quantum drive. What I, I would say just keep it there. We went over the paints in this section earlier. Um, the, see, even Urkel doesn't have the updated paints. Uh, they just have the Pisces paints because this has the code blue and all the other uh, type of paints that come with the rescue. So Urkel, make sure you fix that. And lastly, let's move on to the Ursa Rover, um, which is made by RSI. Now there is the Rover and the Rover Fortuna. Uh, keep in mind, stats wise, they're the same ship, guys. It's just the Ursa Rover Fortuna. It's just a green skin. Other than that, they're the same, the same vehicle. The Ursa Rover is a ground vehicle. Um, it's a size three ground vehicle with crew size of two. Um, it can fit more in the back, as as we saw that the, there were seats back there for people to get out, so it can carry people. If you lift up those seats, those then become cargo grids, so then you could carry cargo. It does carry up to two SCU of cargo. Um, its ship inventory capacity is 0.65 SCU. It has 22,900 hit points. Not bad for a ship of its size. You know, it's six wheels and all that. It's actually a super fun vehicle to roll around in and jump and have fun with. Um, I just wish ground vehicles had more of a purpose uh, right now, because right now they don't. They're just a way to get to a bunker mission or something like that with a bunch of people um, and to store maybe things like an ammo and things. Its top speed is 25 meters a second with uh, 8 meters a second acceleration, 12 faster deceleration and reverse speed than the forward speed. Uh, I should say not speed. De deceleration is 12. Acceleration is 8. Reverse speed is 12. Fastest top speed is 25. Goes for about 70,000 uh, at New Deal in Lorville. It comes with one turret that is a remote turret that can be operated by the pilot or the co-pilot. Um, it is two CF-117 Bulldogly's repeaters, which I recommend you keep those. Uh, it comes with a P, uh, PIN or pin shield, which is a civilian grade three. Um, there's only one other size zero shield that you can put on there, and that is the Castra, which is an industrial shield. I'm not sure if there actually is a benefit. It looks like the Castra can take a little bit more distortion damage. Um, but the civilian one is definitely cheaper. So I would just keep the shield as is the pin. The pin. As far as the power plants go, we can see the power plant is all, almost maxed out. We're using 477 out of 610 power. Not that we need to upgrade it. But if you wanted to, you could go with an industrial uh, power plant on it. It's not going to make that much of a difference. It just bumps us up to 720. So uh, the other stats are the same. So I I would honestly just leave it alone with the Radix. And then the coolers that are on it, um, Frostar SL size zeros, I would leave them alone. Uh, they they provide 100,000 cooling. We're only using 20. I'm sorry, 100K cooling. We're using 24K of the cooling. So I would leave that alone. Um, it doesn't have any other paints. If you want a different paint, you have to get the Ursa Rover Fortuna. So that is it for the loadout. Sorry it took so long. I mean, we're, we're, we are covering six different vehicles. Um, and that's really about it, guys. I think it's time to move into final thoughts. Thanks for watching so far. We're wrapping it up. Well, hey, everybody, I'm here sitting down at Everest Harbor enjoying a tasty Filet Verde burrito with uh, one of the guys that's sitting here that I just kind of sat down with. Anyway, let's talk about final thoughts for the Anvil Carrick. And, you know, I have my own thoughts. I really want to hear your thoughts, to be honest with you. What do you think about the ship? I think it's probably the best Star Citizen ship in the game. I, I didn't really want to spend a lot of money on Star Citizen when I first started playing it. I was like, eh, I got a, I got a prospector and a freelancer, and uh, I think it's good. I'm good. And then I saw Invictus, and I was like, whoa, what is the Anvil Carrick? Because I didn't know much about the game at the time. And I fell in love, and I made my first big purchase, and I believe... I, 
with it before the end of Invictus, I was certainly concierge. The Anvil Carrick is a very expensive ship. Um, I think right now it's probably top two, top three multiplayer ships in the game. It has a lot going for it. Med bay, garage, cargo capacity, multi-crew, multi-bridge, has turrets. It has the hangar with the Pisces. It's it's so much of a complete starship that really, that's why I think it's the best ship in the game, at least right now. I'm sure there could be other ships that are going to be better, and there are certainly... I'm more of a fighter pilot type of guy. I like shooting things down. But when I get together with friends and I talk about role playing, uh, this is definitely the ship to be doing that. So I love the Carrick. It's my baby. I upgraded the stock Carrick to an expedition because I asked CIG and they did it. Yes, you can do that, guys. Um, so I love it. I love the Carrick. There's not much else I could say. I think it's the best ship in the game. As far as the Pisces goes, it's it's an amazing ship. Or I think people just have this love affair with the Pisces. It's a small ship. It's fast. It's maneuverable. It can actually do well in a dogfight, kind of like an M50. It handles well. I think I already said that. It's just so versatile and it's unique. It fits perfectly in that hangar bay. It's uh, quite a few people in it. It can do cargo runs. It can do box missions. You can have all kinds of gameplay without the Carrick and just with the Pisces. It, I like it. I love it. I love the Pisces. It's it's an awesome ship. I love the Pisces. Now, I don't particularly like the base Pisces. I like my Expedition Pisces because it has the two extra guns and everything else that the base Pisces has. So I kind of think the base Pisces is useless, to be completely honest. Why wouldn't you just want to ship with two more guns for a little bit more money, I guess? You can't even buy the base Pisces in game. You just have to buy the Carrick and get it with that. So interesting dilemma there. As far as the Pisces rescue, I think it's a really cool concept. I don't think I would trade it in for my Cutlass Red. I would rather have a Cutlass Red because it has a couple med beds. Um, and it's not that much more expensive. But I do love the concept of a tier three med bed inside of an Anvil Pisces. Super cool. The RSI Ursa Rover, probably second favorite ground vehicle um, next to the Cyclone. I really do love the Cyclone. Um, it is my Warthog from Halo. It's it's an awesome design and I, I like it and I like driving it. But the Ursa Rover comes a close second. I mean, you got a person right next to you, you can have a crew of people. It has a purpose. And it's really, really good for exploration. And it has weapons on it. I mean, it's also a complete ground vehicle the same way the Pisces and the Carricks are kind of complete ships, even though they don't have all their features. But they do have their features and we can actually do exploring in the game. Yeah, gee, let's get exploration in the game. Then the ships are going to be three best, three best variants of something to do in the game. I really can't wait for that day. But I want to hear from you. What do you think of the Carrick? Do you prefer the Misk Odyssey? Do you think the Misk Odyssey is going to be an actual Carrick killer? I don't think it will. I think it's going to be a cool ship. I bought one, but I traded it in for a Polaris. <laughs> I was mad because it can only refine Quantanium, and I think that's dumb. I think we should be able to refine all things at a refinery, and only the Quantanium should go into the actual fuel of the ship. Um... I think it's going to be better than the RSI Galaxy, um, but I did pick one of those up at IAE. Um, that may get upgraded. Who knows? The Pisces, man, great ship. What do you guys think of the Pisces? Do you like the new medical variant? Have you had some time playing with it? It's a pretty darn neat ship. And uh, the Ursa Rover, what do you think of it compared to other ships like the Steve, the uh, like even a, a, a hover vehicle like the like the uh, Hover Quad or the Dragonfly? Knox, what's your favorite ground vehicle? We're going to start doing videos on ground vehicles as well. Uh, this was my first review of a ground vehicle as far as an in-depth review. There's not a lot of lore on things like the Steve and stuff, so we'll have to get to those a little bit later in the pipeline. But thank you guys for watching. Um, if you're a fan of the show, 
our ship videos in general, Java with Jawa, our Thursday night stream, which has been rebranded as the B Team. We got a new intro coming up. Um, you can watch all those replays on on YouTube. Let, let us know if if you know what you think uh, of the show and. You know, subscribe to the channel if I earned your like on this video. I would really appreciate it. Subscribers go a long way. We've done, oh gosh, like 10 giveaways this year, at least 10 giveaways. Sometimes it's just minor stuff like, hey, it's the subscriber uniform or it's something else. But we recently gave away a Drake Corsair. That's $250 ship. Uh, we're about to give away uh, another ship when we hit 2,500 subscribers. Uh, we've done all kinds of stuff this year. We don't typically announce our giveaways. You need to watch the stream and uh, be a part of our Discord. Link is in the description below. And join us on stream. Have fun with us. Play with us. Hang out with us. We love meeting new people. We have an awesome group of people in both Java with Java and the B team and just other people just like to hang out and play Star Citizen. So that I think that would be really, really cool if uh, we got to know you and your opinions. Most of the people that watch our videos, like 90% are not subscribed. So I would appreciate it. I know this was a long one, two hours long, a lot of information to go over. And I thank you for watching this. Thank you to all the BT members that helped film all this. Uh, it's been like a three month project getting this video together. The game actually just crashed while I was filming the outro. I was just about done. So sorry about that, but now you get to see the real fist and you get to see me every night on Thursday if you want to come hang out with us uh, on the B team. Thank you for watching and uh, two hour video. Man, this is going to be fun to render and edit. Good night, Stanton.